Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you had a good lunch and you were able to rest and recover a bit from this morning's uh, session. We're ready to start now the um, better classroom management. Once and for all, you can solve the discipline problem. Sabi ng research, isa sa um, dahilan kung bakit may mga teachers na umaalis sa ating profession. They move to another profession, whether it's uh, selling insurance uh, or uh, corporate world or um, whatever it is. Of course, isang reason sabi nila is uh, hindi kaya yaman sa pagtuturo, ano? Uh, especially dito sa Pilipinas where parang uh, may medyo unfairness. Um, hindi tayo binabayaran ng um, according to uh, world standards. <laughs> In the US, for example, fresh out of college, uh, fresh um, first year teacher can be earning $3,500 a month, uh, which I think I don't know kung meron ka makikita ng ganyang klaseng skwelahan dito sa Pilipinas. But the biggest reason, according to research, kung bakit may mga teachers na umaalis sa pagtuturo is because of failure in classroom management. Uh, yung tinatawag nating kinain ng buong-buo ng mga estudyante. Uh, okay. Uh, can you hear me? Let me see. Ray said, I cannot hear you. Can I ask the others if uh, you can hear me? Please type yes in the chat box. Okay. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Great. Ray, siguro you need to log out muna again. <laughs> and log out ka muna and then balik ka. Um, minsan ganyan nagloloko ang Zoom. Ano? Uh, parang uh, pinaglalaroan tayo. Very good. Okay, so everybody seems to hear me. Uh, okay, I'll tell. Hindi tayo naririnig ni Ray, so I'll just message him. Log out again. Okay, so um, many teachers leave the teaching profession kasi hindi nila nakayanan ang mga estudyante. Yan. It's very sad na may mga teachers sa limbawa Para bang objective of the day, to survive the day. Ayan, ganyan. Ano? Yung para bang ang, <laughs> ang gusto na lang nilang mag magawa is matapos na lang yung araw nang hindi sila sumisigaw, hindi sila nahahigh blood, hindi sila nagagalit, hindi sila natutuyuan ng dugo sa mga bata. Okay, so um, we will solve that with this session today on better classroom management. And uh, I told you one of the things na ginagawa ko sa Center for the 4th and 5th Hours is to bring experts from all over the world um, to the Philippines para magbigay ng kanilang expertise no? to share with our teachers here. So I brought here to Manila yung pinag-uusapan natin kanina, the author of um, Lessons from the Classroom, 20 Things Good Teachers Do, si Hal Urban. I brought him already three times to speak to thousands of teachers in Manila, Cebu, um, Bataan, in Quezon Province. And uh, si Wiggins Grant, the author of Understanding by Design. So he also came to Manila already. Of course, my boss, <clears throat> the signatory of your certificate, <laughs> Dr. Thomas Licona. Um, the president of the center for the fourth and fifth hours based in um, Washington, the, uh, in the State University of New York. And he gave me this franchise sa Pilipinas on um, the Thomas Licona Institute for Asia, otherwise known as the center for the fourth and fifth hours Asia. And of course, yung author ng ating reference this morning on building moral intelligence, Michelle Borba. I've brought her four times already to the Philippines. And as I announced uh, yesterday, we will get her back to Manila, at least online, on April 13 and 14. 
I encourage you to really take advantage because ang dami niyang ibibigay na strategies for teachers kung paano natin tutulungan itong mga estudyante, itong mga kabataan to be mentally healthy in spite of the pandemic, the troubled times, the age of corruption, age of uh, immorality that we read about. So um, that's Michelle Borba. But I think I would say the best speaker I ever I ever brought, uh, well, aside from Jason Everett, is ang ating reference today, si Harry Wong, the author of the um, first days of school. Okay, so um, I brought him and his wife to Manila, and uh, they spoke to. Um, <clears throat> 7,000 teachers in SMX from all over the Philippines. And the um, title ng kanyang presentation is How to Be a Super Successful Teacher. Um, yun ang ibibigay ko sa inyo ngayon, uh, part of uh, yung kanyang presentation, but many other things, especially strategies, from his cassette tape entitled Once and for All, You Can Solve the Discipline Problem. So, ito ang ating reference. Teachers, kung naghahanap kayo ng only one book to buy on classroom management, ito na yun. Okay? And this is uh, applicable from uh, basic education all the way to um, tertiary, all the way to college. Yung mga principles and strategies niya. Okay, majority of the strategies are especially applicable to um, lower years, lower levels. But the principles apl applicable to everyone, anyone who is into teaching. So, mamaya papaliwanag ko, bakit first days of school ang title ng kanyang libro? It will make a lot of sense mamaya when I start giving the um, principles and strategies. Okay, umpisahan na natin. Sabi ko kanina, one of the reasons bakit maraming mga teachers ang umaalis uh, move to another profession is because bad teaching starts happening when there is no classroom management. When classroom management is bad, yan na yung ang ingay ng mga bata, walang disiplina, uh, they don't uh, submit on time, they don't cooperate, they don't participate. Ah, okay, that's one. But maybe there are other reasons for bad teaching. Why bad teaching is happening. And here are some of them. Number one, bad teaching is happening kapag ang teacher has little knowledge of the subject matter na dapat niyang turuan. Minsan nangyayari to sa eskwelahan kapag uh, biglang may isang teacher na nag-resign. Tapos ikaw, bigla kang sinabihan, Ikaw na lang humawak ng calculus. Eh, teka muna, ang tinapos ko, literature, tsaka humanities. Pero by force, <laughs> because we are not full loaded, ayan, binigay sa atin. And then bad teaching starts happening. Kasi little knowledge of the subject matter ang tinuturo niya. Here's the second one, lacks basic academic skills. Poor teaching will happen. Kung ang teacher mismo kulang ang kanyang kaalaman tungkol sa certain academics or academic related um, knowledge of the subject matter. Number three, bad teaching will happen kung ang teacher mababa ang expectation para sa kanyang mga estudyante. Hindi ko gusto yung teacher na papasok ng classroom, nagmamayabang pa, no? ang yabang pa, sasabihin niya, class, kalahati dito, babagsak. Yung bang, ang feeling niya, Napakagaling kong teacher, ang taas ng standard ko, kalahati sa inyo, babagsak. That is holding low expectation. You can be sure, bad teaching will happen there. Fourth, makes little effort to maintain discipline. Kaya minsan may ganyang kang studyante magre-reklamo. Ma'am, hindi ko nga maintindihan yung lesson kasi ang ingay ng klase. Hindi kayang disiplinahin ni sir. Hindi ko madinig yung sinasabi ni ma'am kasi nagdadaldalan yung mga classmates ko and the teacher does not discipline them. Does not try to maintain discipline. 
it happens. It happens in some classrooms. Nung nag-serve ako as principal of intermediate school in South Ridge, may ganyan akong teacher na makikita little effort to maintain discipline. Kasi natatakot sila sa mga bata. O kaya hindi sa natatakot ang feeling nila pag kinorek nila ang bata ay hindi na sila cool, hindi na sila chill. <clears throat> Little effort to maintain discipline. Bad teaching is happening there. Number five, does not focus on academic goals. Number six, cannot communicate knowledge in an interesting way. Ayan, sabi natin kanina, bakit ganun? Lagi nating nadidinig sa mga kabataan ngayon, boring, I am bored. The subject is boring. The teacher is boring. Napaka-boring ng subject. Ba- Lagi nilang binabanggit yung boring na yan. Ha? Maybe poor teaching is happening kasi hindi kayang ibigay ng teacher in an interesting way ang lessons. Pero doon naman sa kabilang klase, excited ang mga bata doon sa tinuturo. Same subject. <clears throat> Same subject. Iba, iba ang section. Pero bakit doon sa kabilang klase, excited ang mga bata? Engaged ang mga bata? So, poor teaching may be happening if the teacher cannot communicate knowledge in an interesting way. Seven, gives disorganized lessons and vague careless assignments. Sasabihin ng mga bata, hindi nga namin alam sir bakit pinapagawa sa amin to eh. Hindi ko makita yung relation dun sa lesson namin. Para bang binigay lang sa amin ng teacher to keep us busy? Ayan. Para bang binigay lang sa amin para lang masabi na meron assignment, may pinapagawa sa bahay. Kasi sabi ng supervisor, uh, give workload sa students this week kasi wala tayong online classes. Bigyan nyo sila ng trabaho to work on. Ayan, mag invento yung teacher ngayon. Pero number seven, disorganized lessons, vague, careless assignments, poor teaching is happening there. Number eight, does not assign homework on a regular basis. Number nine, is not aware of your child's strengths, weaknesses, and interests. You know, parang kailangan sumama ang loob natin kapag nalaman natin, itong studyante na to, 10 months sa klase natin, tapos pumunta sa next level, dun lang natin nabalitaan, he is one of the best violinists in the Philippines. <laughs> 10 months nasa loob ng classroom natin, hindi natin na-discover yun because we never talk to that person. We didn't realize, ito palang studyante natin for 10 months, he is the um, one of the top chess players in NCR, competing in the national competition. Hindi natin na-discover yun kasi there was no personal interaction. Nagpunta lang tayo ng klase, nag-lecture, lumabas. Same thing the next follow, the following class day. Pasok ng classroom, lecture, give assignment, labas. Walang personal ano relationship with the students. Hindi natin na discover ang kanilang strengths, weaknesses, and interests. Eh, warning signs of bad teaching. So complete completuhin natin to 13. Here number 10. Lack uh, shows little enthusiasm for his or her work. Yan. Well, yesterday session at saka itong umaga, siguro naman makita natin, ay napakahalaga pala ng trabaho ko as a teacher. Students are counting on me. Hindi pwedeng walang enthusiasm yan. We are not just covering the curriculum. We are impacting lives. We are making a difference. We are forming character, molding minds, shaping the future. Oh, paano ka hindi magkakaroon ng enthusiasm dyan? So, let us be enthusiastic about our work. Hindi yung parang pagpapasok ka ng classroom, para bang yung ano, kinakaladkad mo yung sarili mo, parang ikay pinaparusahan, ikay pinapahirapan. Ah, maybe we need to review, am I really cut out for teaching? Because ang teacher na walang enthusiasm, but she might be making more damage than educating and forming. Number 11, belittles students' efforts. Number 12, no interest in communicating with parents. Kaya, you know, you will say, someday, somebody will have to say it in a journal, in a dissertation. 
sa Indo sa Maria Escrivas principles about education of collaborating with parents and parents being made to collaborate. That's landmark um, mindset and mentality. It's it's uh, that is um, trademark of good education. Pag merong attempt to reach out to the parents and to get them to collaborate or you collaborating with them. No interest in communicating with parents, bad teaching is happening. And finally, number 13, exhibits unsound character or unprofessional behavior. Somebody mentioned in that question and answer yesterday, paano kung ang teacher mismo ang bad example, uh, bad uh, role model, I mean, uh, wrong kind of modeling. <laughs> well, this is number 13. Ang sagot doon, you can be sure, poor teaching is happening there. Kailangan tulungan. Kailangan tuluan at kailangan tulungan itong teacher na to uh, at mapaliwanag sa kanya na hindi lang tayo dito nag, um, nagtuturo ng subjects ng math, ng English, ng science, ng Filipino. Na, hindi, nagtuturo tayo ng character and how to be a good human being. Okay, sabi ni Harry Wong, every teacher dumadaan sa apat na stages ng teaching. Four stages of teaching. Stage number one. Ito yung mga fresh out of college na alala ninyo yung day one o kaya for, um, the day before ng unang-unang araw mo ng pagtuturo. Nakahangir na yung damit mo, nakaplansya. Uh, the day before pa lang, no? Excited ka eh. uh, Tapos, Yung lesson plan mo, talagang detailed na detailed. Pati yung jokes na bibigay mo, nandun nakalista na. No? Uh, pati yung facial expression mo, inisip mo na kung paano yon Yung script mo sa day one. Tapos iniisip mo, ikaw ang magiging favorite teacher ng uh, buong skwelahan. Ikaw ay pag-uusapan ng mga magulang at ng mga studyante, the best teacher they've ever had. that You are there, ang isip mo, I am going to save the humanity. The, I, that's why nag-teacher ako kasi I will be the salvation of uh, many of my students. Yan ang tinatawag na fantasy. Okay? <laughs> that's the stage called fantasy. <laughs> Yung bang ang isip mo pagka pagtapos ng class after, before dismissal, sasabihin mo, okay class, time already, time's up. Uh, dismissal na. Ang kala mo, sasabihin ng mga bata, No, ma'am, we want more. We want more. Don't leave. <laughs> Fantasy. I mean, it doesn't happen that way. Maybe not anymore. Fantasy ends the day. Pumasok ka ng classroom. Yung pinaghandaan mong lesson plan. May tatlong studyante, tutulugan ang yung class. Makikita mo sila, abay, nandun natutulog. Pinaghandaan ko itong lesson na to, Itong activity na to, Nilaanan ko ng napakaraming oras. Tapos matutulog lang to. That's when fantasy ends. Fantasy ends when pasok ka ng classroom one day. Abay, ang kalat-kalat. Ang gulo-gulo ng mga silya. Meron pang t-shirt dito. sa Sasahig, ganong ginagawa ng t-shirt dito? Bakit ganito? And then students are noisy boisterously laughing. Nandun sa isang sulok yung iba. And then, you tell them, go back to your seats. Sit down. Aba, hindi kikilos yung iba dun. Kailangan mong isigaw. Lakasan ng boses mo dahil uh, masyadong malakas ang ingay sa loob ng classroom. Fantasy ends that day and you enter the second stage called survival. <laughs> survival. This is the second stage according to Harry Wong. When parabang every day napapasok ka, it's like entering the jungle. <laughs> it's like a challenge. Uh, dadaldal kaya ngayon si Joanna. Magagalit na naman kaya uh, ako ngayon kay uh, Pedro. Kailangan ko kayang sabihan ulit si Alfredo, sit down 10 times. Stop talking 20 times. I sit on the board. 30 times? Kailangan kayang ganun? That's when you start surviving. 
para bang the only objective of the day is to survive the day. <clears throat> People, teachers who are in the stage of survival, pagkatapos ng class, pupunta yan sa kanilang, sa faculty room, meron silang binibilang dun eh. Uh, 22 more days before Christmas break. Ayan, ganyan. 18 more days before summer break. Surviving. Yun na lang ang kanilang iniisip. Worse, I have met teachers who have been in that stage for years. Pagbalik nila sa faculty room, ang binibilang nila 10 more years before retirement. Very sad kasi itong teacher na to, decided to become a teacher because she wants to make a difference, because she wants to change lives, because she wants to make an impact in the lives of the students. Pero kasi kulang siya sa classroom management, para bang every day is survival mode. Yung the only objective is to finish the day na hindi tayo nagagalit, na hindi tayo um, nawawalan ng pasyensya. Yeah. So then, third stage. As you continue teaching, you struggle to learn more and more better ways of doing things. Kagaya ng ginagawa natin ngayon, nag, uh, nag, uh, hahanap tayo ng mga bagong strategies na pwede nating magamit to be more effective teachers. As you continue teaching, aba, nadidiskubre mo, mas natututo pala ang mga bata pag inuna ko tong chapter na to bago yon. Ah, you have entered the stage of mastery. Uy, pag, ginawa ng, pag pinagawa ko itong activity sa mga bata, very engaged sila, excited. Ah, you have entered the stage called mastery. Or itong subject na to, itong subject matter ng lesson plan, ito yung talagang maraming hirap na hirap. Kailangan bagalan ko ang aking pag-discuss at laging magtatanong kung naintindihan nila. Ah, you have entered the stage called mastery. You see, as we continue teaching, we learn better and better ways of doing things. Hindi na tayo nagsusurvive lang. Wala na tayo sa fantasy. We're beginning to be the master teachers we should be. But today and yesterday, I've been giving you strategies para umabot tayo sa fourth stage of teaching. The highest stage and the ideal stage of teaching, impact. Hindi lang tayo interesado na ang mga bata matututo sa subject matter na binibigay natin. We want them to be good human beings. We want them to grow up with respect, with responsibility, with love for the faith, with love for God. To do the example of our life, with professionalism, with kindness, with lahat ito. Impact. Hindi lang tayo interesado na makakapasa sila ng last final exam, ng unit test, ng grade. Interesado tayo that they will survive life, the biggest test called life. <laughs> Impact. That's, those are the four stages. And yes, we can... Pero hindi natin magagawa yon if we resort to shouting, screaming, yelling, getting angry, getting upset. Those poor classroom management strategies na parang they work. But no, they, especially dito sa mga henerasyon ng kabataan ngayon, they don't work anymore. Okay, those are the four stages of teaching. And then we, th we think, ano, some of you, Ilang taon na kayo siguro nasa loob ng classroom, isipin natin nasa ang stage na ako rito. Am I still in the survival mode? I need strategies. Or no, some of you can actually say, ah, nasa impact na ako. Kaya ang daming nagbabalikan na graduates, they look for me. They want to shake my hands. Look, look me straight in the eyes and tell me, Sir, maraming salamat. I am who I am because of you. I've made an impact in the lives of my students. So, effective teacher. You know, pag merong isang magazine lang ang bibilin nyo para sa skwelahan nyo, educational leadership it is. Kung saan nilalagay nila ang some of the 
best research done on teaching and learning education. And one of the best research na ginawa nila, ito ang effective teacher research spanning 50 years. Nag-interview sila ng teachers na spanning 50 years of teaching. Nag-interview sila ng thousands of students and teachers. Tinanong ang simpleng question, ano ang mga nakita mong top traits ng effective teachers you've ever had? And after spending a lot of time gathering the information, here are the top three na lumabas. Top three traits of effective teachers. Number one, on top of the list, itong pinag-uusapan natin ngayong hapon. An effective teacher is a good classroom manager. We believe that kasi kayo mismo, look back to your years inside the classroom. Diba? Meron tayong mga ganong klaseng teacher. Isang tingin lang sa class, tumatahimik lahat. Paano nagagawa ni ma'am yun? Paano nagagawa ni sir yun? Nakikinig lahat. Tapos lahat gusto mag-recite. Excited to participate. How? Meron tayong mga teachers na talagang nagpulsigit tayong hindi lang makapasa, but to get good grades, to submit the best projects, to submit the best assignments. And then we realize, we look back, ah, kasi ang galing na classroom manager ng teacher. Kaya niyang disiplinahin ang klase. Kaya niyang patrabauhin to the best of that they can ang mga studyante. So that's number one trait na lumabas in this 50-year study. Here's number two. An effective teacher designs lessons to reach mastery. A very important point I want to raise. Hindi ako believe sa mga teachers na nagyayabang na maraming bumabagsak sa klase nila. Tapos sila pa yung mayabang, ano? sasabihin nila, aba, mataas ang standard ko. Bahala sila. Pag hindi sila nag-aral, bagsak sila. Kahit na 70% sila lang ng klase babagsak at mag-uulit ng school year, problema nila yon. Sir, ma'am, hindi nila problema yon. Maybe something is wrong with the way you design your lessons. <laughs> Kasi sabi ng research, the second top trait of effective teachers is ang teacher mismo nagde-design ng kanyang lessons for the students to reach mastery. Para maintindihan talaga ng mga estudyante ang kanilang dapat maintindihan. Hindi nila maintindihan this way na tinuro natin, maghahanap tayo ng ibang paraan. Maghahanap tayo ng ibang materials. Maghahanap tayo ng ibang activities. But we will not stop until makuha natin. If I teach it this way, maiintindihan ng mga bata. Of course, there's such a thing as student factor, lazy, no motivation, no self-control, etc. Pero we are the adults. Eh. Tayo ang adult sa loob ng classroom. Tayo ang expect, expected na mag-a-adjust. Sino ngayon mag-a-adjust? Ang teacher in the way we design our life. Kaya gustong gusto ko yung UBD, Understanding by Design. By design, gagawa natin ng unit plan na maiintindihan ng mga bata. Yung gusto nating ituro sa kanila. Num number three, third top trait of effective teachers according to the 50-year study. An effective teacher has positive expectation na ang mga bata ay magiging successful. In academics, in life, in, uh, in everything. You see, yan ang impact. Hindi lang tayo interesado na sila'y makakapasa ng final exam, ng quiz next week, ng long test one month from now. Interesado tayong makita silang lalaking mabuti at magaling na tao with character. Sabi ng research, this is not from me. The number one factor governing learning, sabi ng research, is classroom management. Kaya wag kang magsabi, ay sir, Miss Rentoy, kung alam mo lang ang disiplina ng klase namin, ibang klase na ang mga bata ngayon talaga. 
Yes, but if you know how to manage those undisciplined boys or girls, you can succeed pa rin in teaching. Learning can still happen. It's not self-esteem. It's not motivation. It's not the economic background of the students. It's not class size, etc. It's the way the teacher is able to manage the students. That is when learning will happen. Kung kaya niya, if he has, she has effective classroom management strategies, kaya niyang mag, mag, uh, magawa ng paraan na ang mga bata matututo. Okay, now, I have been interchanging discipline and classroom management. Let's differentiate. They are two totally different things. Okay? Discipline is magbibigay ka ng rules and if they don't follow, punishment. Discipline na yun. Classroom management is you manage the class so that they learn. Um, those are two different things. Harry Wong principle. Harry Wong said, stop disciplining and start managing. You, you get that idea? You don't need discipline if you know how to manage. Now, let me um, in, illustrate for you. The stewardesses in airlines, hindi sila nagdidisiplina. They manage the, air, the airplane. They manage the plane. Look, see how they do it. Kahit anong aeroplano ang sasakyan mo, Mapa Philippine Airlines, Cebu Pacific, Virgin Airlines, Alitalia, uh, kahit anong aeroplano ang sakyan mo, what do they do before takeoff? And this is what good schools also do. They review the procedures before takeoff. Now take note, hindi yon rules. They are procedures. And what are the procedures? And they're the same in any airline na pasukin mo. Pare-pareho ang procedure. Ina-announce yun. Open the window shade. Close the table in front of you. Straighten up the chair. Fasten the seat belts. Di ba? Pare-pareho yun. Minsan may dadagdag sila. Yung, ear, uh, yung um, um, turn off cell phones, cellular phones, or put in silent mode na lang ngayon. Hindi na kailangan i-turn off. Uh, pero kahit anong eroplano ang sasakyan mo, pare-pareho ang procedures. Please take note, they are not rules, they are procedures. Because the stewardesses, they manage, they don't discipline, kaya hindi yun rules. Now, um, I mentioned kahit anong airline ang pasukin mo. Here is a problem, teachers. Pag ang studyante nagsabi, Ma'am, bakit dito bawal uh, lumipat ng chair? Doon sa kabila kay ma'am, pwede naman eh. Ah, that's when you have a problem, right? Biglang magkakaroon ka ng confusion. Oo nga, oo nga. Bakit doon pwede pang kumain uh, sa loob ng classroom? Dito bawal. You see, magkakaroon ka ng problema kung iba-iba uh, ang expectations in every classroom. Kaya sabi ni Harry Wong, the best uh, classroom management plan is Procedures have to be the same kahit anong classroom ang pasokin ng mga bata. Procedure on how to start the class. Pare-pareho, alam nila yan. Kahit sinong teacher ang papasok, ang procedure is the same. Stand by your desk, align the desks, face the board, wait for the teacher to start with a prayer. Ganon, kahit anong subject. Dapat hindi mo madidinig yung reklamo ng, Kay ma'am, pwede sa kabila, eh, dito bawal. Can you imagine kung gano'n ang sasabihin ng pasahero sa Cebu Pacific? Bakit, bakit kailangan ibuksan yung bintana sa Philippine Airlines? Pwede. No, in any airline, napasokin mo, pare-pareho ang procedure. Now, here's what happens next. After reviewing the procedures, ano ang gagawin ng stewardess or stewardesses? They go around checking if everyone is following the procedure. Diba? Now, they're not disciplining, they're managing. So, what do managers do? They only do two things. Pag may nakita silang hindi sumusunod sa procedure, dal dalawa lang gagawin nila. Number one, ma'am, sir. Number two, the seatbelt, please. Two things. Call the person, ma'am or sir, 
Number two, tell him or her exactly what you want him to do. That's managing. Uh, sir, the window shade, please. Pakibukas. Thank you. Uh, sir, yung chair, pakidiretso na lang. Thank you. They only do those two things, call you ma'am or sir, and then tell you exactly what they want you to do. Because that's managing. Here is what stewardesses will do if they are not managing their disciplining. A teacher who becomes a stewardess, <laughs> and then di disiplinahin niya ang, ang pasahero, ganitong gagawin niya. Pag nakakita ng hindi sumusunod sa procedure, Sir, hindi niyo ba nadinig yung announcement? Kailangan bang tagaluging ko pa sa inyo? Pareho kayo ng anak mo. Seatbelt nga. Ilang beses ba kailangan sabihan? <laughs> May, ganyan minsan, di ba yung teacher? Meron pang andaming useless words. Ano? How many times do I have to tell you? Ilang beses ka, da, ka ba dapat sabihan? Hindi mo ba nadinig yung sinabi ko? What's wrong with you? Anong may sakit ka ba? <laughs> I mean, those are, Harry Wong would say, useless words you shouldn't use in managing a class. Just as stewardesses will never use those expressions of, kailangan ko bang tagalugan? Hindi nyo ba nadinig yung announcement? Um, nakakaintindi ka ba? Bakit, bakit hindi mo magawa yung simple pinapagawa? None of those things. Simply, John, sit down please. Joanna, stop talking please. Alfred, stay on your seat. Yun lang. Or better yet, I'm going to teach you strategies. You don't even have to say, sit down, face here, eyes on the board, stop talking, listen, keep quiet. N none of those things. You will not need those things kung meron kang classroom strategies, which we're going to learn from Harry Wong in a while. But please understand this very clearly. Discipline is not the same as classroom management. Kaya yung sinasabi ng ibang teacher, Sir, alam mo, ang problema sa skwelahan namin, um, I've heard this in some schools out there, walang disiplina ang mga bata. Ay, hindi. <laughs> hindi sa walang disiplina ang mga bata, walang classroom management ang teachers nyo. Kailangan nyo ng seminar on how to do effective classroom management. Okay? And what is the best classroom management? Procedures and routines. Procedures and routines. Make the students, teach the students procedures and make them do the procedures over and over and over and over again until they become routines. Remember, I repeat, hindi ito rules. They are just procedures. So, dapat ang ginagawa ng mga skwelahan at the start of the school year is spend a lot of time teaching the procedures, and rehearsing them over and over and over until they become routines, until they become automatic. Kaya pala ang title ng libro ni Harry Wong, The Best Book, which has sold more than 5 million copies all over the world, is First Days of School. Kasi yun ang pinakamahalagang uh, time of the year na kung saan ituturo natin sa mga bata ang procedures and rehearse. Ito yung isang problema ng ibang skwelahan. Meron silang procedures, they teach the students, pero hindi nila ni rehearse. Kaya hindi nagiging routine. Kaya five months later, hindi pa rin nasusunod ng mga bata ang ibang procedures. Kasi hindi mo ni rehearse, eh. hindi siya naging routines. So, research says, you want responsible students? Number one. The only way you can have responsible students is if you have procedures and routines which the students can be responsible to. Take note, ah, the students are responsible to the procedures and routines, not to you. So please, ma'am, sir, don't ever say something like, Jan, kanina ka pa dyan, ah. Ilang beses ka ba dapat sabihan? Are you challenging my authority? Ayan, di ba may ganyang teacher? Lalabas yun sa bibig nila. Are you challenging my authority? No, ma'am. He's not challenging your authority. He is just not following the procedure. So, make him follow the procedure. Hindi siya responsable sa'yo. Responsable siya dun sa procedures that you taught them. 
Pero kung wala kang uh, procedures and routines, then expect them to be irresponsible. Kasi wala silang alam na uh, kailangan nilang bigyan ng responsibility to. Number two, kung alam ng mga estudyante kung paano pinapatakbo ang klase, they are more willingly ready to do kahit anong gusto mong pagawa sa kanila. How to recite, how to uh, start the class, how to end the class, how to clean up the place, how to, uh, yung heading of papers, yung mga, uh, sir, do we need to put our full name? Pwedeng nickname lang, pwedeng class number lang. Sir, do we need to put the date? Kung tinuro na natin ito nung day one, hindi na nila tatanungin yan over and over throughout many days. Or um, reciting. Do you expect them to raise their hand? Wait to be called bago sila tumayo? So, ano yun? Or do you expect them to recite ng nakaupo? What is your procedure? Dapat ituro natin ito and then rehearse with the students. Then they become routines. Let's differentiate now procedures and routines. Procedures, what you want students to do. Routines, what students do automatically. <clears throat> okay? So, yan ang classroom management. When you just ask the students to follow procedures, non, it, walang kinalaman yan sa discipline? Wala pang kinalaman yan sa discipline. It's just all about how do we do things here inside our classroom. Okay, so, sabi ng research, the number one problem in the classroom Hindi disciplina. It's the lack of procedures and routines. That's why you want a disciplined classroom, a well-oiled machine, like a well-oiled machine classroom, have procedures, have routines. Here are some samples. No? Mga, iba, mga ilan sa mga examples na papakita ko sa inyo na meron kayong dapat procedures. Better yet, Uniform procedures and routines sa bawat classroom. So, one of the things na dapat gagawin nyo as a workshop is, let's sit down. Let's agree on uniform procedures and routines na ituturo natin sa mga sudyante at kahit anong classroom ang pasukin nila. Kahit sinong teacher ang nandyan sa loob ng classroom, pare-pareho ang expectations. Pare-pareho ang what we want them to do and how we do things. Here, I'll give you a few examples of procedures of Harry Wong passing in papers no? in a classroom setting. Sabi ni Harry Wong, kung ikaw ay katulad ng ibang teachers na gumagamit nitong expression, okay, class, time's up, exam, no? time's up, pens down, pass the papers forward. Sabi ni Harry Wong, that is one of the worst ways to pass in papers. To collect papers. You know, the usual setup of a classroom. May rows, may aisles, ganyan, ano? Tapos sasabihin mo, pass the papers forward. What usually happens? Ang mga bata, hindi yan anghel. Some of them, hindi, hindi titigil ng magsulat. Hindi yan titigil magsulat hanggang hindi mo sabihin, papers not in, I will not collect anymore. Yan, di ba? So, what happens? Yung mga nasa likod, sila ang parang unang gustong mag-submit kasi ang layo nila. Eh yung nasa harap niya, nagsusulat pa. Hindi nga niya alam na nagsasubmit ng paper yung sa harap. So anong gagawin ng nasa likod? Hahampasin niya ng paper niya. Uy, pass na raw, sabi ni ma'am. <laughs> yung nasa harap naman, haharap, uh, titingnan yung nasa likod. Ano ba? Hindi pa ako tapos. <laughs> and you have a class erupting into chaos simply because, sabi ng teacher, Pass the papers forward. That's the worst way to collect pre, uh, papers. That's the worst procedure. Here's a better procedure, and I learned it from Harry Wong, and I've always done it. So, yung classroom, traditional setup, me rows. Ganito ang aking ang, ang procedure. I taught it to the students. We rehearsed it, and they know it already how to do. Okay, class, time's up. Papers down. At the count of five, all papers to the aisles. You see, hindi ko sila sasabihin pass the papers forward. Second thing, 
I set five only at the count of five because I don't want to waste so much time just collecting papers. Time is precious. Academic time is very precious. So sasabihin ko, at the count of five, all papers to the aisles. And neither hers namin to. I say five. You see, I start counting down. Five, four, three, two, one. I don't say one, two, three, four, five. Kasi pwede pang maging six, seven, eight, nine, ten yon. Pero pag sinabi mong five, four, three, two, one, ay talagang babagsak ka sa one. By the time you reach one, you expect the papers to be along the aisles. Pag sabi kong five, ni rehearse namin, the students at the edge of the rows, yung nasa dulo, should already be putting their papers, passing their papers to the person to their left. Okay? Kung ang aisle nandun, to their left. Kung ang aisle nandun, they are passing the people at the very extreme, yung nasa dulo, pinapasa na nila ang kanilang paper to the person next to them. Hindi na nila kailangang hampasin kasi nandyan sa peripheral vision ng nitong tatanggap ng papel, kita niya na itong classmate niya nagsasubmit ng papel. Hindi, niya, hindi na siya kailangang hampasin ng papel. For, and then alam nitong tumanggap ng papel na yon na dapat ipinapasa niya na by the, say, by the time I say for, Kinuha niya na yung papel ng classmate niya at pinapasa niya na dito sa person next to him. Three, two, and one. By the time I say one, all the papers are along the aisles and I walk down the aisle collecting the papers. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I collect the papers which are all along the aisles. And that is it. In a matter of less than 10 seconds, I'm done collecting papers. Now, if you see somebody not following the procedure, for example, during the rehearsal, nakita mo, sabi mo, for, pero si John, hindi niya pinapasa yung papel sa tabi niya. Don't get angry. Don't get mad. All you have to do is say, John, what's the procedure, please? Gagawin niya, papasa niya yung papel. Thank you. Yun lang. Day 10. Okay, let's have the papers at the uh, count of five to the aisles. Five, four, Jan is not following again. Don't get angry. Don't get mad. Jan, ano ang procedure? Gagawin niya, ipapasa niya. Then you get on with life. Day 100, Jan, what's the procedure, please? He will do it. Day 200, final day of final exam, and Jan will not do it. Jan, what's the procedure, please? And he will do it. No need to get angry, upset. No need for, are you challenging my authority? Uh, what's wrong with you? Uh, hindi ka ba makaintindi? Anong um, sakit ng ulo mo? Bakit ka ganyan? None of those things. John, what's the procedure, please? Similar to the airline stewardess. Sir, sit belt, please. Ma'am, the chair, pakidiretso. Thank you. So, um... It requires discipline on our part to refrain from those useless words. And to rehearse this in the first days of school, itudo natin sa mga bata, and then, okay class, let's rehearse this, okay? Ganito ang gagawin natin na pagka nagsabi akong pass the papers to the aisle at the count of five, ha? rehearse it until it becomes routine, automatic. Here's another one. When teacher is tardy, Many teachers, wala silang procedure. Pagka teacher is tardy. Kaya anong nangyayari in some classrooms? Pag late ang teacher, nag-ring ang bell. Walang teacher sa classroom. What happens? The classroom becomes a zoo. Ayan. Lagi kong nakita dati yun sa ano, uh, South Ridge, all boys school. Eh, no? Northfield, nagturo rin ako. Minsan, ganun din. Pag walang teacher, walang strategy ang teacher sa uh, procedures, the classroom becomes a noisy uh, jungle. <laughs> ah, I have a procedure and I teach it and I rehearse it with my students. Okay, class, this is how it works. Ah. Pag nagring ang bell, walang teacher sa classroom, here's the procedure. Class president, class vice president, come to the front, take over the class discipline. Secretary, pupunta ka sa office. Magtatanong ka sa office, sir, is Mr. So-and-so here? 
is there a substitute? There is no teacher in our classroom. Okay, that's the procedure. Let's pretend the, it's break time. And then the bell rings, no teacher. Let's see, I want to see you do the procedure. You rehearse it and it becomes automatic. The next time they hear the bell ringing, the first thing the president will check is may, teach, may teacher ba? Ah, walang well, teacher. The routine follows. They will go to the um, they will go to the front, take over the class. Secretary will go to the office. Procedures, routines. Here is another set of procedures and routines. I'll give you one example from Harry Wong coming to attention. Paano mo mapapatahimik ang klase kasi gusto mo nang magsimula? Or binigyan mo ng assignment, diba? Uh, get a pair, find a partner, go to any corner in the room, and then discuss the answer to this question until I tell you it's time. Okay? So they now go to different parts. Tapos maingay ang classroom kasi nagdi-discuss sila eh. That's okay. That's noise of activity. That's noise of learning. Kasi nagdi-discuss eh. It's academic activity. Now, time is up. You want to call their attention. A teacher without strategy, sisigaw siya. Okay, back to your seats now. Stop talking. That's an ineffective teacher. Kailangan niya pang mas lakasan ang boses niya kasi ang taas ng noise level eh. Kung hindi pa rin madinig, kailangan niyang hampasin yung blackboard para makayong madinig ng mga... Kung hindi pa rin, kailangan niyang patay-patayin yung ilaw para makuha yung attention. That's an ineffective teacher. Here's one, what an effective teacher will do. One uh, strategy from Harry Wong. Salami. Salami. Stop and look at me. Salami. Stop and look at me. And here's how it works. He would teach it to the class. Well, I've used it many times. He would teach it at the, to the class at the start of the school year, and they will rehearse it over and over until it becomes routine. And what is the procedure? Class, I will stand in the middle of the room and calmly raise my hand. If you see the teacher raising his hand, it means stop whatever you're talking, whatever you're doing. Look at the teacher. Stop and look at me. If you have classmates looking the other way, tap them at the back, tap them at their back, tell them the teacher, point to the teacher, salami. So in a count of three, four, five seconds, without you even saying anything, but just calmly raising your hand, they keep quiet and they're ready. They will pay attention. It works, especially if you rehearse it and it becomes a routine. One day I was invited to speak in St. Paul's Pasig. There were 1,000 students in the gymnasium. I was asked to give a one-week seminar on journalism and leadership to students from all, all the 52 campuses of St. Paul's system. And... They were going to be there for one week. So excited lahat. Ang ingay. Uh, excited. Nagsisigawan. Excited to see old friends. To get to know others. Suddenly, here came the principal. Um, Sister Teresing. Sister uh, Teresa. She went up to the stage and calmly raised her hand like that. And I tell you, in a matter of five seconds... The noisy, loud, boisterous uh, gymnasium of 1,000 students all kept quiet. And she didn't even use the microphone. She didn't even say anything. She just calmly raised her hand because that's their procedure. And it's a routine. It has become a routine. Sinusunod ng mga kabataan, makita lang nila yon. That's coming to attention procedure. Here's another one. Minsan, gaya nun, sabi ko, uh, get a partner, find a corner in the room, and um, work whatever you want. Okay? Now, here's another method. It's called the bell method. I teach it to the students, and we rehearse it. It's a routine. Okay, class. Um, we're going to do the paired discussion, no? 
Pero when you hear the bell, when I ring the bell, ting, I'm going to count three, two, and one. By the time I reach end one, I expect you to stop talking, even if you're in the middle of the sentence. You don't need to stand up, but stop talking, look at the teacher, and get ready to hear an announcement or to pay attention. Pay attention because I'm going to say something. Okay, let's try it. And then I will rehearse it with them. Get a partner, go to whatever corner of the room, uh, talk to each other about what I did last summer. Okay, uh, what I watched in Netflix in the last one month. Ayan. So go and there, pag mataas na yung noise level, I will ring the bell. Ting! Three, two, and one. I reach and one. Nagsasalita pa si John. I don't get angry. I don't get mad. I just have to say, John, what's the procedure, please? He will stop talking and he will look at you. Thank you. Let's rehearse it again. I'll give you again time to... So, rehearse until it becomes automatic. There comes a time. You ring the bell. You don't need to count. You don't need to count. In a matter of two, three seconds, the whole room is going to be quiet. They're looking at you, paying attention, ready to listen. You can come up with many more procedures, as many procedures as you need and as you want. In the laboratory, in the corridors, procedure when uh, lining up to get food in the cafeteria, procedure if you want to go to the office and talk to a teacher, there should be procedures. Some of them you might need to teach later on, not at the start of the school. Halimbawa, graduation ceremony. The way you receive the diploma with your left hand and the way you shake the hand with your right hand and the way you face the crowd and bow. That's not rule. Those are not rules. They're procedures. And you're going to rehearse the students over and over until they are able to do it like a routine perfectly. Diba? We also do that for graduations. Maybe we even sometimes need to rehearse the procedure for attending a first Friday mass or mass or um, procedure if uh, we are going to go to the assembly, the student assembly, the school assembly, whatever it is, but have uniform procedures, rehearse them until they become routines. They are not rules. They are simply how you want the students to do what you want students to do. Okay, well, I have been talking for an hour. And so um, allow me to give you a bit of a break, just um, a video or two to show you for those who need to take advantage of the time to go to the washroom or to drink water. Um, let this be your... Um, needed break. Meanwhile, uh, here are a video or two for you. Tagal kong nintay ang araw na to. Hindi para tumanggap ng Mga may dahilang to. Gusto kong ibigay ang karangalan sa taong nagdala sa akin dito. Ma? Narito ako ngayon dahil sa ng katulad mong pagmamahal. Yung pagmamahal na kayang tiisin ng pagod, pagtapos lang ako. Yung pagmamahal na gayang piisin ng sariling gutom, ibigay lang ang gusto ko. Yung pagmamahal na gayang itago ang lungkot para maging masaya lang kami. Yung kayang sabihin, okay lang lahat. Huwag lang bumigat ang loob ko. Alam kong hindi naging madali para sa'yo. Mula nang mawala si Papa, ikaw na tumayong mama at Papa ko, kinaya mo ang lahat-lahat. 
dahil nangako ko sa akin ng gabi niyo. Joey, anak, kakayanin ko ang lahat para sa iyo. Kaya nga, alam kong sasabihin mo sa akin proud ka. Pero mas gusto kong sabihin sa lahat na mas proud ako sa mama ko. Nung bata ako, ang tingin ko sa tatay ko, superhero. Malakas, hindi na papagod. Hindi na sasaktan. Di ko naisip na isang araw mag-iiba ang mundo. Lahat natakot. Kahit sino daw, pwedeng masaktan. Kahit si tatay. Nak, punta na ako. Sige po tayo, ingat. Noon ko naisip, tao lang si tatay. Napapagod. Pwedeng masaktan. Pero kahit alam niya yun, hinarap pa rin niya ang panganib. Nilabanan ng takot. Kahit sa ganitong panahon, para suportahan pa rin kami. Kung dati, hanga ako sa lakas ng katawan niya. Ngayon, mas napahanga niya ako dahil sa lakas ng loob niya. Kahit alam niyang mahirap at pwede siyang mapahamak, Andito na ako! Pinili niyang maging matapang. Kaya ngayon, mas tumindi pa ang respeto ko kay tatay. At di ko man madala sabihin sa kanya to. Nagpa-deliver pa ako ng paborito niyo. Pero sobra kong pinapahalagahan lahat ng ginagawa niya para sa amin. Okay, that's good enough uh, break for us. Let's move on because there are many strategies I want to share with you. There is a question about uh, paano yung mga sudyante nga, no? may mga ganyang klaseng sudyante na second chance na lang. O kaya, uh, anyway, um, pwede ko namang ulitin next year. O kaya, even worse, sasabihin nila, hmm, sa DepEd naman, hindi pwede magbagsak eh. So okay lang yan. Uh, Yes, and there are students who are like that, unfortunately. One is, dito papasok yung prinsipyo na communicate with the parents. Kaya kailangan natin talaga. Uh, kung seryoso tayo sa ating 
adhikaing matulungan itong studyanteng ito, gagawa natin ng paraan na matulungan siya kung hindi natin kayang gawin sa loob ng classroom, kukunin natin ang collaboration, ang support, ang tulong ng mga magulang. Baka sila kaya nilang disiplinahin itong kanilang anak kasi it's a problem now of discipline. But there are also other ways. If magbibigay tayo sa kanya ng support system na ang kanyang classmates mismo magbibigay ng um, uh, ang tinataw... Papasok yung bukas when we talk about uh, class advisory, how to create a culture of support, of camaraderie, of friendship, of uh, helping each other inside the classroom. Hindi lang ikaw ang mamamroblema nito. Yun yung sinasabi natin kahapon, the reason why kailangan natin ng meetings, class meetings, is because dapat hindi lang ikaw ang uh, sasalo ng problema <laughs> ng ganitong klaseng studyante. Yung classmates, dapat sama-sama rin maghahanap ng solusyon at tulong-tulong nagagawa ng paraan na matulungan itong isang studyante ito. Um, and you'll be surprised. Minsan, students come out with very creative uh, ideas on how to solve a, a problem like this, how to help a classmate like this. Um, so, dun papasok na yung um, using beyond classroom means, pero yung binigay kong uh, strategies for the class advisory or the teacher um, providing certain reward system, providing... Uh, creating a certain culture or mindset among the class, not just among this, um, with this one person. All of this will contribute to finding a solution. Pero kung talagang halimbawa, nagkaroon ka ng is is isang estudyante na yung talagang walang pakialam, <laughs> uh, wala nang pakialam makapasa, ginawa mo ng lahat na magagawa mo, please don't um, punish yourself unnecessarily. Basta masasabi mong I've done more than the, what is expected of me. I've gone beyond the, the usual mile, uh, extra mile for this student. Okay, we leave it at that. Sometimes we find ourselves, abay, wala na talag, talaga tayong magagawa, kundi ipanalangin na lang itong estudyante ito. No? Um, there is a talk I gave in uh, January, Teach Like Jesus, at saka stop teaching, start evangelizing. It's a two-day, uh, it's a two-module uh, seminar, part of the um, series for Catholic schools. And one of the points given there is really, if you're teaching in a Catholic school, you have to find yourself at certain points ending up relying only on prayers. <laughs> because we're not dealing here with machines. You know that, we know that. We are dealing here with human beings and uh, a teacher who's really serious about forming character, molding minds. There will come a certain point you realize you can only do so much. Certain things you have to leave to God to do. You have to leave to grace to do, to find a solution in. Okay? But the fact that you ask this is clear indication. Talagang interesado ka, natulungan ito mga bata. I mean, um, you have encountered such challenges and you want to help, which is a sign of a, a good educator. You have the heart of an educator. Okay, let's go back and go to Kohlberg's six levels of moral development. Si Kohlberg uh, studied, ano, bakit ba nagpapakabait ang isang tao? And he discovered... Well, at least yung kanyang theory is ah, nagpapakabait, uh, nagpapakabait ang isang tao according to the six levels. The lowest level, the lowest reason why some people do good or try to do the good is because, number one, I don't want to get into trouble. <laughs> That's the lowest. And sometimes teachers are guilty of uh, resorting to the lowest level of moral development. Pag sinabi natin yung mga things like, uh, class, you better behave, ha? you better behave. Naku, or else, makikita nyo, makikita nyo. Tanong ng bata, ma'am, anong makikita namin? <laughs> um, so, the kids now will behave because ayaw nila ng punishment, ayaw nila ng detention. 
ayaw nila ng suspension, ayaw nilang mapagalitan. That's the lowest level. Parents can also be guilty of this when they say, Naku, pagdating ng tatay mo, makikita mo. <laughs> Maghintay ka. So the kid now will behave because ayaw niyang mapalo, ayaw niyang mapagalitan, ayaw niyang sigawan. I don't want to get into trouble is the lowest level of moral development. Here's a better one, but it's still not the ideal kasi second level pa lang siya. I want a reward. Mahilig dyan yung mga teachers sa primary schools. no Reward system sila. Yung may tatak dito. Uh, star student. Ayan. Uh, good job. O kaya may bibigay na sticker dito. Um, kind student today of the day. Ayan. I want a reward. They do the good because sabi ni mame, may free time. Sabi ni Sere, manonood kami ng sine sa loob ng klase nung pagka uh, lahat makapasa, may reward. Okay, at least that's better than avoiding simply a punishment. Doing good in order to get a reward. But we can do better than this. Sabi ni si Kohlberg, ang nag-invento uh, nitong six levels, Rafe Esquith applied it to classroom setting. Here's the problem with level two. In real life, alam natin to eh, professionals na tayo. In real life, minsan kahit anong ganda ng trabaho mo, the reward doesn't come. Di ba? The reward doesn't come. Walang bonus na bigla ka matatanggap. Walang announcement na sasabihin ng principal, good job to the following. Now, is that reason for you to stop doing the good? No. We continue doing the good because it's the right thing to do. But we can do better than just Wanting a reward. Number three. Level three. Bakit daw nagpapakabait ang, ang ibang tao? Here's the third level. Because I want to please somebody. Marami tayong estudyante ganyan. Nag-aaral ng mabuti. Pinagpupulsigi ang kanilang pag-aaral. Kasi umaasa sa kanila ang kanilang pamilya. They, he wants to please the family. He wants to give a better life to the family. Fantastic, ano? Napakaganda na. Minsan sa classroom, I want to please the teacher. Yung tawag natin minsan dyan, sip-sip. <laughs> sip-sip. Para bang um, doing the right thing kasi nagba, nakatingin ng teacher and I want to please the teacher. I want to please my... Ang problema ngayon, sabi ni Rafe, is okay, that's a very nice thing already. But uh, in real life, in real life, minsan kahit anong ganda ng trabaho mo, the boss doesn't seem to be pleased. Walang announcement, walang pat in the back, walang acknowledgement of our efforts. I don't even know if my principal is pleased with me. <laughs> is that reason to stop doing the good? No, we continue doing the good because it's the right thing to do. So here's the fourth level. I follow the rules. Yan. I follow the rules. Ay, ang ganda no, kung lahat ng estudyante natin umabot dito sa kahit fourth stage lang, stage four of moral development. Kasi nakasulat sa handbook, kasi nakasulat sa faculty manual, kasi it's the rule of the school. Ba? Ganda. Maganda na. Pero here's the problem. In fact, in life, sometimes yung mga heroes, yung mga... Uh, exceptional people are those who are not afraid to break rules. <laughs> Jose Rizal broke rules. He's our national hero. You know, even Jesus Christ broke rules when he performed miracles on a Sabbath. <laughs> because there's more to life than just rules. There's more to life than the um, Sabbath rule, um, the law of Sabbath. Charity is even higher than rules. So, sabi ni Rafe, maganda na itong fourth level, but we can even do better than this. Uh, you know, ang complaint ko dito sa rules, in fact, is minsan, para bang rules can be inconsiderate, no? Meron akong kilalang skwelahan, uh, pinapapasok nila yung secretaries ng skwelahan December, between December 25 and January 1. Kasi uh, 
hindi naman yun holiday eh. So, pasok kayo. And you have a faculty room that is good for 50. And there are two or three secretaries with fully air-conditioned room for 50. <laughs> and lights on uh, the, in a room that is good for 50. And internet is running, of course. You don't turn off Wi-Fi in the school. But mo pinapasok yung dalawa? Eh, wala naman teachers. Ah, kasi it's the rule. It's not a holiday. You see, sometimes in life, we have to go beyond the rules. <laughs> I mean, isn't it more humane na pag-enjoy mo na ng Christmas vacation, itong dalawang to, and don't count it as vacation. Uh, give it as a gift na lang. Kasi imbis naman gumastos ka ng kuryente for two, ng, elect, uh, ng um, aircon, ng lights, ng internet. So sometimes there's more to life than just rules. That's why we can do better than fourth level. Here's fifth level of moral development. I am considerate of other people. Turuan natin ang ating mga estudyante to be very considerate of other people. I better listen in class. Pinaghirapan ni ma'am itong lesson. I have to be considerate of her sacrifices. Uy, exceptional teacher daw to. Uh, talagang talented. Matututo ka talaga pag makinig ka. We better listen. Kasi that teacher became an expert through years of effort, of hard work. Let's be considerate of his sacrifices. I better study hard. My parents sacrifice a lot para sa aking tuition, para sa aking gastusen, pagpapalaki sa akin. I have to be considerate of my parents' sacrifices so kailangan mag-aral mag ako ng mabuti. You see, it's not because... I have to avoid the punishment. It's not because my reward that my parents promise. It's not because it's the rule or it's because I want to please. No, I'm considerate of the other people. I better do I better do my work well. I better study hard. I'm considerate of other people. If you can make your students reach even just level five, ay napakaganda na ng ating impact on the students. We are raising them to be men and women of character. But we can even do better than just level five, sabi ni Rafe Esquith. And ito dapat ang guiding principle natin for classroom management, for discipline, for raising our students to be good men and women. I have a personal code of behavior and I follow it. Ito ang sixth level of moral development, the highest level. Ano ibig sabihin yan? Well, class, I expect you to behave your best in classroom and outside of the school. Why? Because you carry the name of our school. Pag nasa labas ka dun, how you behave, that is how they will judge our school. And our school has to be known as a school where we teach character, where we have fear of God, where we love God, where we have fear of a uh, where we have a deep love for what is sacred and holy and deep respect for the elders, the adults. And you see, good parents do this. Good parents tell their children, O oh, anak ha, magpakabait ka sa skwelahan, magpakabait ka yan, dala mo ang pangalan ng ating pamilya. Di ba? Good parents say that. It's not because I'm offering a reward. It's not because I will punish you. It's not because it's the law. Dala mo ang pangalan ng ating pamilya. Dala mo ang pangalan ng ating skwelahan. That's why in the first days of school, dapat ang ginagawa ng skwelahan is to make the students understand what do we stand for as a school? What are our core values? What should our school be known by? What virtues? should our students be known by society out there? And then we can actually say at a certain point, please do your best to behave properly because dala mo ang pangalan ng ating skwelahan. And our skwelahan has a personal code of behavior and we live by it. We have a mission vision and we live by it. Yesterday, pinag-usapan natin, our school has a touchstone and we live that way. That is how we carry our life. This 
are the six levels of moral development. Ito dapat ang ating um, objective kung paano tayo magdidisiplina sa ating mga sudyante. Why it's necessary to manage, not to discipline, but to manage our students. Okay, but it's good to have a discipline plan. Okay? It's good to have a discipline plan. A bad school with bad teachers. Pag walang discipline plan, what happens? If a student breaks a rule, abay mag invento on the spot yung teacher, go to the principal's office. No! <laughs> yung bata naman pupunta sa principal's office and the principal will ask the, the kid, oh, ba't ka nandito? Ewan ko ma'am, pinapunta ko ng teacher. Kasi wala naman yun sa procedure. Wala naman yun sa plan. Wala yun sa discipline plan. Nag-invento ang teacher. Ang feeling niya, sending a student to the principal's office is already the worst punishment. <laughs> I will show you. It is not. It should not be a punishment. Now, paniwalaan natin to. Really, walang studenting gustong mabuli, maharas sa loob ng classroom. Even the kids themselves, gusto nila ang discipline even more than we do. Here are five kasinungalingan tungkol sa pagdidisiplina. Five myths. Mr. Rantoy, alam mo wala kaming problema sana with discipline. Um, kung sinunod ko lang itong advice ng senior teacher namin, do not smile until Christmas. Yan. <laughs> You know, minsan natatawa tayo sa ganitong klaseng, do not smile until Christmas. But nadinig ko to, a senior teacher advising a first-year teacher, alam mo, wag kang ngingiti, uh, pakita mo sa estudyante mo na seryoso ka, na um, dapat matakot sila sa iyo. They will not even dare break your rules. Do not smile. That's fake. That's a fake thing. It's a myth. Uh, it's wrong. In fact, I advise, tomorrow I will talk about advisory, and I advise class advisors, when you welcome the students on day one, offer them your biggest, widest, fakest smile, and tell them, uh, I'm so happy to see you. Welcome to the classroom. And there's nothing wrong with smiling. Let's not be afraid of smiling. It has, the classroom has to, has to be a welcoming place. Here's the second myth. Alam mo, Mr. Rentoy, wala sana kaming problema with discipline if only I am big and tough. Yung bang the students will never, never even dare um, misbehave kasi matatakot sila sa akin. No, that's not true. I've had teachers who were big. I mean, okay, they're overweight even, <laughs> but they were very motherly. They were very fatherly. Um, they were not scary, and we behaved. Or we've had teachers who are very thin, very frail, very uh, short, but we behaved. He knew how to manage the class. It's a myth. Number three, third kasinungalingan. Alam mo, Mr. Rentoy, wala sana kaming problema with discipline if only we have the latest gadgets. Yung every room may video projector, every room may laptop, may computer, ganyan. If you can afford these things, fantastic. But they are not going to solve your discipline problem. I was consultant to a, an international school. Aba? Bawat classroom may giant television screen with HD TV but they have problems of bullying in the school. So, hindi totoo yan. Latest gadgets will solve your... No. Here's a fourth myth. Mr. Rantoy, wala kaming problema sana with uh, discipline. If only my students come from middle class. Kasi ang problema yung nandun sa mga napakayayaman o kaya yung mga napakahihirap na students na walang motivation, walang self... Um, parang may problema ang kanilang um, self-esteem. That's not true. That's not true. I had students in UANP. Nagla-lunch sila. Kasi scholar sila. Eh. They came from the provinces. Valediktorian dun. Pagdating dito, limited budget. Nagla-lunch sila. Kasama ng mga taxi drivers tsaka tricycle drivers dun sa NEDA. Uh, Karinderia. Uh, at the back of NEDA office. And yet, they're motivated to succeed. 
I had students who pag announce pa lang ng Malacañang ng long weekend, <laughs> magbubuk na yan ng Cebu Pacific, piece of fare um, to fly to Boracay or to fly to Hong Kong. <laughs> but um, they can be managed. They were motivated. So it's not the economic background. That's not true. It's not about the economic background. Of the, it's how we manage them. And number five, kasinungalingan. And I want to address myself especially to young teachers, especially fresh out of college, may tendency young teachers to fall into this trap, into this myth. Ni said, Antoy, wala kaming problema with discipline kasi I'm friends with my students. You know, barkada ko lang sila. We even eat out together. We go to McDo, Jollibee, um, nakikipag-inuman pa nga kami minsan eh. I'm friends with my students. Wala akong problema with discipline. That's not true. And in the first place, please, you are not meant to be friends with your students. You are meant to be a role model to your students, not friends. Those are two totally different things. And besides, be friendly. Okay, go ahead. Be very, very friendly. But you are not just meant to be a friend of your students. Yung bang, you go down to their level and then you speak the same language and you try to be cool and chill. Ah, I've seen tragic ends to that in my years as principal and vice principal. At a certain point, malilito ang mga bata. but ka nagalit sa ano, discipline sa classroom? Ano, kala ko ba friends tayo? <laughs> Nalito na ang mga bata. Hindi. Teacher natin yan. <laughs> you listen. So, one day, nagalit ang teacher. Oh, no more friendship? Ano yun? <laughs> no. Um, in fact, um, I've seen bad ends to teachers trying too hard to be friends with the students, trying to be barkada, going to, down to their level, and then before they know it, they have lost control of the class. So these are the five myths, okay? Let me describe to you four classrooms with four different types of disciplining or managing. Number one, low control, low support. The teacher has low control. Why? Because hindi niya alam eh. Hindi siya tinuruan ng classroom management. May natutulog na estudyante natatakot siya. Baka paggisingin niya, bagalit sa kanya. Never mind, tulog ka na lang dyan. Low control. May dalawang sudyante, kanina pa nag-uusap. Baka pagtawagin ko ang kanilang attention, magalit sa akin. Never mind, sige na nga, mag-uusap kayo dyan, bahala kayo. Low control. Ito yung mga sudyante ngayon, nag-co-complain. Hindi kayang i-discipline na ni ma'am yung class, yung sir, ni sir. Hindi ko nga madinig yung lecture eh, kasi ang ingay ng mga classmates ko. Low support. They don't like that kind of teacher because they start complaining. Bakit kasi ito pa yung teacher natin? Balita ko dun sa kabilang class, mas strict to raw si Mrs. Bustamante, pero ma natututo ang mga bata. At saka may disiplina ang mga bata. Bakit kasi kailangan pang kunin itong subject na to? Bakit kasi kailangan pang pag-aralan to? The students get bored of the teacher who cannot control and the students who give low support for that kind of teacher. Here's another kind of classroom, low control, high support. Low control now, gusto nyong lumipat ng chairs, bahala kayo, go ahead. Gusto mong mag-text kahit bawal ang cellphone, go ahead, basta doon ka umupo sa likod, ha? bantayan mo lang na walang dadaan na teacher. O kaya Miss Principal will not pass by. Gusto mong kumain, doon kayo, sige, sa likod ng classroom. Siguro doon mo lang walang dumadaan na teacher. Low control. The teacher does not control. Why? Because she or he is trying to be like trying very much to be popular among the students. So, low control. And high support. The students are saying, okay to ah. okay si mama, okay si Sarah, chill. Parang barkada lang natin. Parang he's just one of us. He understands us. Galinga. Well, not all students are like that. Some are mature enough to see itong si Sir trying hard to be popular. Nagpapa, trying hard to be liked lang yan. Parang tumatakbo sa popularity contest. 
and these students will start becoming frustrated, especially because that kind of teacher, low control, high support, end up having favorites. Yan yung ano, anatomy of a favoritism that starts happening inside the classroom. Low control, high support. In both cases, syempre, ang kawawa yung bata. Ano? I mean, really, kawawang bata. Here's the third type of classroom. High control, low support. High control now, sit up straight. Stop talking. Eyes on the board. Why are you laughing? Get out. Inhale. Exhale. I mean, that kind of high control. Para bang ultimo yung paghinga ng mga estudyante, kailangan bantay mo, no? Yung bang nag-joke siya, tapos, why are you laughing? What's the matter with you? Get out. Eh, nagpatawa ka, sir, eh. No, get a terror teacher ang tawag natin dito, no? No support. They are afraid of the teacher. They're terrorized by the teacher. Pero alam nyo, minsan, iniisip ng ibang tao, ay, very effective. Oo, very effective. Kasi pag pumasok ka ng classroom na yan, abay, napakatahimik. Parang sementeryo. Parang patay lahat. Walang gustong magsalita. Kasi takot sila na pag magkamali pa sila ng salita, a terror teacher will get mad at them. You know, the kind of classroom you're going to produce, the students are waiting for a chance to get back at the teacher. Kaya minsan meron kang school-wide assembly. Pag nabanggit itong pangalan ng teacher na to, ang hiyawan ng mga bata, ibang klase, it's not a hiyawan of a respect or like, it's a hiyawan na parang gusto nilang pahiyain yung teacher. Revengeful. <laughs> Naging revengeful yung class. Gusto nilang makaganti dun sa teacher na yun. High control, low support. They don't like that kind of teacher. Well, what we want to be is effective teachers with good classroom management that we can, we have high control. You want the students to participate, they will recite and participate. You want the students to study for an exam, they will do their best to study. You want them to be quiet, they will be quiet. You want them to clean up the room, they will clean up the room. You want them to work as a team to win in the Buwanang Wika, they will try their best to win that Buwanang Wika contest. And high support, the students do what you want them to do because they know that you know what you're doing. Alam nila eh. Alam nila na itong teacher na to, ang taas ng standards. And of course, you know what kind of classroom you're going to produce a successful one. Okay, so let's talk about the discipline plan. A discipline, you know, I go around the Philippines visiting schools. I ask them, meron kayong discipline plan? Yes, sasabihin nila, may rules. And if they don't follow the rules, may punishment. Ma'am, question, what if they follow the rules? Wala, edi hindi magagalit ang teacher. Ah, hindi yan discipline plan. A discipline, uh, discipline plan should have three parts. The rules, negative consequences if they don't get to follow. But yes, there should be rewards. There should be positive consequences if they follow the rules. Now, I remind you, pag sabi kong rules dito, this is totally different from procedures. You can have as many procedures as you want for as long as you teach the students and rehearse them over and over again. Pero ang rules, sabi ni Harry Wong, there should only be enough that they can memorize. How do you expect them to follow the rules kung hindi nila mismo ma-memorize yun? Ni hindi nga nila maaalala lahat eh. So, there should only be rules enough that they can memorize. In my years of following Harry Wong's system, I only had three simple rules in my class, whether it is grade four or MA classes in UANP. Tatlo lang. No unnecessary noise, no unnecessary movement, come prepared for class. Yun lang, tatlo lang. And on day one, I explained to them, ano ibig sabihin ng no unnecessary noise, ng no unnecessary movement, and coming prepared for class. So that if they choose to break any of my rules, they would know that they are breaking them when they do certain things. Negative consequences, penalty. Positive consequences, rewards. 
Okay? Now, I'm not saying ito dapat ang rules nyo. Ha? Um, similar to the, poly, the um, suggestion earlier, if rules are the same in any classroom, kahit anong room ang pasukin ng mga bata, the rules are the same, then you stand a better chance of succeeding in, in school-wide classroom, effective classroom management. Rule is there should be more rewards than punishments. Because you stand a better chance of getting the students to follow the rules pag they are working to get a reward than to avoid a punishment. Here are some samples of positive consequences. Ang iba sa kanila applicable to primary school. Some of them can be applied even to college and even to post um, college, post secondary, or post tertiary, even. Okay? Halimbawa, itong I'm proud of you statement. No, oh, that's that can be done even in a PhD class, <laughs> which I did with my uh, class in UANP, Latin. I was teaching Latin there. Pinagawa ko sila ng report, presentation, and then at the end of the presentations of the students of the different groups sabi ko sa class class i'm i'm so proud of you i if i had a chance i want other schools to be able to watch your presentations good job that was fantastic why because they came prepared that's rule number 1 or number 3 rather come prepared for class and they came perfectly prepared and they were really fantastic presentations and those are college students and that's a, po a positive consequence of what they did okay here are more kasi sabi ni Harry Wong there should be more rewards than punishments so here are more consequences some applicable to primary school preschool even others applicable all the way to college Now, take note, sabi ko kanina, di ba? You know, sending a student to the principal's office, that's not, that should not be a punishment. I bring students who need special acknowledgement to the principal's office so that the principal can congratulate them. Sir, sir principal, itong student na to, he was failing last quarter. And then, he is now the most improved third honors. He deserves a pat in the back. He deserves a special acknowledge, uh, acknowledgement from you, Ma'am Principal, Sir Principal. You see, uh, sending a student to the principal's office that should not be um, sanction, a disciplinary matter. And you can come up with other consequences. Here are some samples of negative consequences. Some of them we've always been doing. Detention, suspension, stay in class after dismissal to clean the room. Ayan. <laughs> diba? Some more um, negative consequences. If the students choose to break any of the rules, then face the negative consequence. Some of them, I repeat, applicable to preschool. Some others can be done even all the way to college, to postgraduate studies even. No? And some more negative consequences. Many of them, most likely, nasa ano na ninyo, no? the student's handbook, faculty manual, school policies, like itong drop from the rolls, non-readmission, nandun na usually yan. So some of these negative consequences nandun na yan sa ating... Okay, so, um, principle of Harry Wong, there should be more rewards than pen penalties. Kasi students will more willingly do what you want them to do kung um, pinagtatrabawuhan nila ang makuha ang reward rather than avoid a penalty. Okay, we're winding down some concrete strategies. Alam nyo, sabi ni Harry Wong, Classroom management daw, seminar, dapat ginagawa to sa ano eh. 
ballet studio where you have mirrors all around. Mirror. Kasi sabi niya, the most effective tool for disciplining, <laughs> strategy for disciplining. And some of you, nagkaroon na kayo ng teacher ng mga ganito. Ginagamit nila to. The most effective is the stare. Di ba? May ganyan tayong teacher. Isang tingin niya lang sa class. Wala siyang sinasabi. Uy, tatahimik lahat. One stare. Here's the problem with the stare. No? Minsan kasi hindi natin nakikita yung mukha natin. Eh. Merong stare na parang ang mensahe na binibigay niya is mga hayop kayong mga bata kayo, papatayin ko kayo, hayop kayong demonyo sa ang lupalop ng impyerno kayo nang galing. Yung ganong klase ang mensahe ng stare. <laughs> But there are some kinds of stare, there is a kind of stare na ang mensahe na makukuha ng mga bata is, oh come on now, come on, I expect best behavior from you. Without you saying a word, pero with just that look on your face. Sabi ni Harry Wong, look at yourself in the mirror and then look for that perfect stare na pag binigay mo sa mga bata, lahat ng gusto mong sabihin nandun na, come on, I expect best behavior. You can do better than that. Oh, class, come on. Don't um, make me, don't challenge me. Don't um, make me upset. There's a kind of stare na pag binigay natin, it says all those things and it's effective. At the fact of the matter is, we've had teachers na ganyan. Isang tingin sa class without hardly any effort. That's the wonderful, wonderful thing about master teachers. Ano? Para bang the way they discipline the class, Almost no effort. <laughs> Halos parang without shouting, without screaming, without getting angry, getting upset, without throwing the chalk on the face of the student, kaya nilang disiplinahin ng class. And this is, sabi ni Harry Wong, one of the best methods, the stare. Here is the check system. Sabi ko sa inyo kanina, even better, if you don't need to repeat, Sit down. Sit up straight. Eyes on the board. Stop talking. Kanina pa kayo dyan ha. Ilang beses kayo dapat pagsabi. Without even saying those things, kaya niyong disiplinahin ang klase. And here is how it works. And I was happy to see Harry Wong doing it. Rafe Esquith using it. Ron Clark using it. By the way, minsan ang, ang kailangan lang ng teachers is a bit of inspiration, no? Kung naghahanap kayo ng inspiring teacher movie to show your teachers, go to YouTube, look for the Ron Clark story starring Matthew Perry. The Ron Clark story. It's a very inspiring movie about um, Ron Clark on his first year. He is one of the most successful and respected teachers in the world today. So successful He even managed to put up a school in Atlanta, the Ron Clark Academy. So watch that movie if you need inspiration. He used it. Hal Urban used the check system. So he, here's how it works. It's one of the last strategies we will tackle now. Sabi ni Harry Wong, don't eat up academic time in order to discipline. None of this may mga teachers akong kilala. Pag galit na galit na sila, they stop teaching. And then they spend the rest of the class lecturing, uh, sermonizing. Uh, yung pagagalitan yung class, ano, tapos magle-lecture tungkol sa wala kayong mga disiplina, pinahihirapan yung mga teachers for 15 minutes. No, sabi ni Harry Wong, don't waste academic time in order to discipline. And one way of doing it is the check system. You remember, sabi ko sa inyo, I only have three rules in my class. And I explained to them, ano ibig sabihin ng uh, no unnecessary noise, no unnecessary movement, come prepared for class. If you choose to break any of my rules, then I will apply the check system. And here's how it works. Halimbawa, ang subject ko is, ang subject ko is English. And I am teaching subject-verb agreement sa mga estudyante ko, okay? And then, I'm lecturing, okay class, subject-verb agreement. If the subject is singular, dapat ang verb mo singular din. If the subject is plural, dapat ang verb mo plural din, okay? 
Tapos napansin ko si Jan and Joey talking with each other. They decided to choose, I mean, they chose to break rule number one, no unnecessary noise. I don't stop, I don't um, stop my lecture and I don't waste academic time in order to discipline Jan and Joey. Here's how it goes. I pick up the chalk while lecturing. I go to the board and write the names of Jan, Joey. Jan and Joey know already kasi piniliwanag ko to sa start of the school year that if they choose to break any of my rules, I will write their names on the board. No punishment. That's just a warning. I continue my lecture. Sometimes there are nouns that are always plural. Uh, sorry, always singular. Nobody, no one, someone, something, anyone. And then I notice John and Joey talking again. I don't stop. I don't get angry. I don't shout. I calmly pick up the chalk, go to the board, and put a check mark beside the name of John and Joey. Alam nila na if your name is written on the board with a check mark, it means five minutes detention in recess or lunch, whichever is coming up next, or after dismissal. A second check mark beside your name means 15 minutes of detention in the recess, in lunch, or in dismissal, whichever is coming up next. A third check mark means balikan ng Sabado, Saturday detention. A fourth check mark means tatawagan ko ang mga magulang mo. Without even saying anything, Pinaliwanag ko sa kanila ang check system. I'm able to make John and Joey stop talking just by writing their names on the board. And there's no punishment yet. It's just a warning. The first check mark that I write there is when meron ng punishment. That's why I find this very fair. Hindi kayong parang naghahanap lang ng paparusahan ng mga bata na bibigyan ng sanction. No. You give them a warning first by writing their names on the board. And... I never have to stop my teaching. I can do the check mark even while still discussing. Of course, you know what happens usually when I write the names of John and Joey on the board. The whole class will look at John and Joey. And it's the whole class that will say, shh, stop talking. Warning, may warning. <laughs> I like it. It works. I mean, really, it worked. I even used it all the way to high school the check system. No wonder the best teachers in the world use it. Harry Wong, Rafe Esquith, Hal Urban, Ron Clark, and many more. Or here's another system. It's a reward system. Similar, to, I mean, kung ayaw mo yung check system na yon, here is the stopwatch system, which is a reward system. Here's how it goes. Sa South Chiridge kasi, 50 minutes per class. Ano? And then, Ang subject namin is 50 minutes and then I would meet them three times a week or four times a week, depending on the subject. At the start of the month, I usually would bring itong mga stopwatch na may countdown and I would show the class, okay class, you have 50 minutes of reward in my stopwatch. But remember, every time someone chooses to break any of my rules, I will click the clock it will start counting down. Mawawalan kayo ng seconds from the reward until I stop it. So here's how it works. I'm lecturing in English and ang subject namin is subject verb agreement. There are some nouns, however, that uh, are always in singular. Anyone, anybody, something, somebody. I noticed John and Joey talking. I don't stop lecturing. I calmly pick up the clock and click it, and it starts counting down. Nawawala ng seconds from the 50-minute reward. And John and Joey will show me that they're sorry, they will not talk anymore. I stop. They have made the class lose seven seconds from the reward. I continue lecturing. And then in the middle of my lecture, Joanna starts standing up, breaking Choosing to break rule number two, no unnecessary movement without asking permission. Eh. So I don't stop my lecture. I just follow Lo Joanna with my eyes, calmly pick up the clock and click it. You know what happens next? The whole class will look at Joanna. Joanna, sit down. Upo ka. 
the clock, the clock. Ayan. <laughs> and Joanna will rush back to the seat, almost saying, sorry, I will stop the clock. Joanna just made the class lose five, six, seven seconds. And it's like that, day after day, class after class, I don't stop my lecturing. I just calmly pick up the clock and click it. And it's the whole class that will look at the person, tell him kung anong gagawin niya dahil ayaw nilang maubusan ng reward. Because the reward is fantastic. The, here is how it works. At the end of the month, whatever minutes left dun sa clock, let's say because of the times I had to click it, let's say 45 minutes ang natira or 42 minutes. Bibigyan ko ngayon ng menu of rewards ang class officers para pumili ang buong class ano sa menu of rewards ang kanilang kukunin. 42 minutes of uh, quiz B. Magka-quiz B tayo. Uh, I will group you into teams and then the questions will come from the lessons we took up in the month. 42 minutes of movie related to the lesson that we are taking up. 42 minutes of a treasure hunt. Jim Kana, I will hide clues and you will formulate statements, statements related to the lesson. 42 minutes of a free time um, study period. You can read whatever you want. You can, because anyway, we managed to cover lahat ng dapat nating i-cover because I never had to stop to discipline. It works. And what I like most about it is it's, it's a reward. And you stand a better chance of getting students to do what you want them to do when they are working to get a reward. But you know, the best use of the stopwatch system, especially sa all boys school, ano? Um, nung nagtuturo ako sa Northfield and South Ridge, the best use for that is minsan pagpasok mo ng classroom, ang gulo-gulo ng klase, di ba? Eh, old boys school, minsan magtataka, anong ginagawa nitong medjas dito? Bakit may, may brief? Ba't, ba't may brief doon? Especially after PE class, ang gulo ng klase. Um, so, an inefficient teacher will have to shout, scream, or yell to get them to fix up fast. Or, an inefficient teacher will spend five minutes just getting the class um, ready to start after a PE class, after a laboratory class. Not me. Situations like that, I use the stopwatch method. I raise the clock and click it. You know what happens next? People will start saying, Uy, bilis, ayusin nyo na yung classroom, yung clock, yung clock. <laughs> because they don't want to lose more minutes or more seconds from the clock. And amazingly, in 10 seconds, the class that was in chaos suddenly is in order. Everyone standing by the desk and ready to begin because they don't want more seconds to disappear from their reward. Especially if the reward they're working for is someone, something they really want to get. I didn't even mind putting in 42 minutes of funny videos that I will... Kasi natapos namin yung lahat namin dapat uh, tapusin na pag I never had to stop. And besides, I never had to get angry. I never had to shout or scream or yell. I just raised the clock calmly and clicked it. It's, it works. No wonder the best teachers in the world resort to this. Reward system is not the... I mean, we cannot end, of course, with this. Kasi sabi ko kanina, I want a reward is second level of moral development. It has to go hand in hand with this is how we do things here sa ating classroom. We have a certain culture, a culture of um, a culture of support, of um, helping each other, of succeeding. Okay, well, it is 3.53. This, we've been here for almost two hours and I will not be able to cover Rafe Esquith's methods and madness. Uh, which we will cover tomorrow also pag uh, dating natin sa class advisory, our uh, last of the five uh, sessions of these Better Teachers, Better Schools. Okay, 
So, um, yeah, I was able to answer this uh, question of William earlier. And since it's, well, it's already almost time, it's beyond time. I was um, announcing before one and a half hours. So if you have any question, if you have any question about this topic or yung natapos natin kaninang umaga or kahapon, please don't hesitate to email it to me to catalystpds at gmail.com or if you're already sa, nandun ka na sa Facebook uh, page natin of uh, schools of character, then you can send a um, message there and I might be able to find time to answer them bago tayo magpanimula ng, aking, ng ating discussion tomorrow on class advisory. Okay? Creating a culture in our class, in our school. So, um, please email those questions or send them as a message and I will make sure to tackle them when we resume tomorrow at 9.45 for our last session. Okay? So, thank you very much. You've been fantastic. No? You've been very quiet because you're all muted. So, <laughs> you really have no choice. As usual, give me an hour and the recording of this um, session will be available in our Facebook page as all the other sessions are already posted there as well as the PowerPoint presentations. So for those of you who want to review or I don't even mind, use them to give seminars to your other fellow teachers out there. Okay, see you tomorrow at 9.45, 9.15. I will start the um, uh, Jollibee videos if you're interested. <laughs> and then we will begin at exactly 9.45 like we always did uh, tomorrow for the last session. Thank you very much to all of you for um, joining. Take care. Uh, I will end this meeting in three Two and bye everyone.